Okay, hello everyone. This is Aneka with Aneka TV. Today we're here with Mr. Olushola Nizam, an entrepreneur in Atlanta, Georgia. And today we're discussing trademarks. And he has a very interesting story to tell our viewers about trademarks and uh, a battle, of course, that he was involved in recently with a, a huge retail giant. I'll let him take, uh, <laughs> take it from here. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Um, great. Thank you for taking the time to uh, discuss this with us today. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Um, I've been doing hair for about 20 years. I worked for Miss America, um, Lustre Silk. Um, my last stint was with BET with all the award shows for the last um, six or seven years. And in that process, um, I knew there was a need for an um, eco-friendly product line, not only for the, uh, for the consumer, but for the stylist also. So, so you know, it's been a... a, a, a a relationship of trying to make people happy, but trying to protect the stylus and protect our environment. So that's basically what came up with Embody International. Okay. And so Embody International, does it target a particular um, group, or is it just for everybody? Anyone can use your product? Well, because of the scientific approach of hair, um, we know that hair is hair. Um, it doesn't have a, a really doesn't have a color to it. Okay. It's more so as a... a, a um, has a, a culture to it. Okay. Our product goes across all cultures. So, okay. you know, Asian, curly hair, straight hair, no hair like me. <laughs> <laughs> because we're also dealing with scalps. The scalp okay. is skin, and you okay. know, neglect scalp, so. Okay. Okay. And so, now, with the name is Embody, E-M-B-O-D-I, International. That's the name of your product line and your, your company. Okay. Okay, and also your name, Olushola, our audience, I'm sure they're hearing a different <laughs> a different accent, but your name is Olushola. Do you mind telling us your, you know, how you got your name? Um, I'm third generation removed from Nigeria. Wow. Um, on the wow. father's side, of course. Okay. So um, I'm going to always have a legacy in it, in my heritage. Oh, okay. I have a great accent, but I'm always keeping the look in the name. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what it, it, I, your company, Embody International, you recently had a bit of a battle with the retail giant. Do you mind telling us a little bit about that? Well, um, last year um, in June, Walmart sent me a letter and asked me would I um, coexist with them for um, my name, Embody. And I was like, what do you mean coexist? You know, then I did some research and found out that they tried to do a trademark for anybody, and they wouldn't deny. So I, you know, if you kind of know my personality, I kind of threw the letter in the garbage and said whatever, and kept on moving. Then around September, got a, a really ugly letter from Walmart saying, "You don't um, sign this coexisting agreement, we're going to come after you." I'm like, "Are you serious?" Well, come on, <laughs> please, you know. So uh, again, I didn't respond. And then Christmas, December 23rd, to be exact, of last year, we uh, were notified by mail that Walmart was taking us to trademark court to have our name negated or to have our name canceled, our trademark canceled. And from that point on, it was a battle of the wills. You know, Walmart, of course, is a big, big giant, and, you know, we're a very small business. So I just figured that, you know, we could only do one of two things. Either you beat me up, or I can knock you down. But, you know, did the games begin? Okay. <laughs> so it's a, it was definitely like a David and Goliath situation with Extreme. Goliath, of course, being Walmart and you being David. And what, David was, your, was, brother. what was your slingshot? What, what, was your, what, was your, what was your weapon, your slingshot? Because David had a slingshot for Goliath that's, you know, the rock that took him down. What was it that was your rock? What was it that was your weapon? And why did you – How? what made you – Feel like you could take this, take Walmart on, basically, in court. Well, be, well to be honest with you, um, I don't like to be rolled over, and I hate to see the um, underdog always rolled over. And I feel like at this point, I'm finally the underdog. And I knew that um, the concept of Embody International 
goes back probably to 1996, 97. And that um, we had really did everything by the law for the trademark. And Walmart came behind us. So, you know, if you go straight by the laws, it would seem that Walmart would have to take a back seat. Because anybody can come up with a name, but we protected ourselves immediately. And we had a paper trail from 1996. Okay, so what was Walmart's claim then to the name? What was, what were they saying? Why did they feel that they had right to the name and body? They said in 2004 that, um, and I'm not sure about all the particulars, but in 2004 they said that um, they had acquired the name from a small business person, but it was E-M-B-O-B-Y. Okay. And my thing was, well, we've been working on this since 1996. Okay. And... You know, as soon as um, I was able to actually put it on paper, I went and get the trademark. Okay. You know, we all have um, ideas of what we want to do with, other, with products or a, a, a company, whatever. So I knew before I talked to a lot of people, I need to protect myself with this. Okay. So Walmart didn't understand that um, once they started doing the investigation, I believe, they realized that out of, we had 25 people that were going to say in 1996, 1995, he was already using the body. He was already developing the body. Right. So you, you already had that product line being developed under the name InBody International. Exactly. And Walmart claimed that they had rights to it starting from 2004, where your rights, or your use of the name started dated back to 1996. Exactly. But we didn't actually register in 2008. Okay. I see. Okay, so... Now, Walmart takes you to court. What was your initial reaction to, I mean, finding out that Walmart was coming after you? Obviously, you didn't cut and run, so. But what was your initial reaction to, to that? To how, well, tell us how you felt. My first reaction was, again, are you serious? <laughs> you know, because right. um, why me? Right. I mean, Walmart has billions and billions of dollars. If they couldn't think of a name, I could have thought of a name for them. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, it's like, right. well, you, know, right. you know, if you can't think of a name, I'll think of a name for you. Right. And we'll all rest, you know, live, live in peace. Okay. okay. If they spent a lot of money um, at the beginning of this to um, um, try to acquire this name. Okay. okay. And crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so you also mentioned that initially if they didn't uh, want to take you to court to take the name from you. They wanted to coexist. Exactly. What does that mean? What, what was their idea of coexisting with, with the name Embody? Well, 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 legally, coexisting may mean that Walmart can put Embody products in their store, and we can still be Embody over here in Atlanta, even though we sell all around the country and outside the United States. Okay. But my biggest issue would be that Walmart dollars would overshadow my small business. Okay. So the people that thought they were getting Embody with an I would go to Walmart and be getting Embody with a Y and total different brands. Okay. So we would never be able to do, at this point, we would never be able to compete with them when okay. it came to market. Okay. Okay. I see. So how was this issue finally resolved with Walmart? Um, I had a great attorney, and um, Jerry Caldwell here in Atlanta, and uh, I think he just kind of beat me to the punch for everything, and Walmart just decided they didn't want to be bothered. So going forward, what does this mean for your business? What advice do you have for um, someone thinking of starting their own business or current entrepreneurs with regards to trademarks and, and names? What advice would you give them? Well, I mean, I think the most important thing for um, small business people is to find someone that um, understands law, business law, do your research, and then protect yourself before you start talking about it. Um, we, um, as, um, laymen, we usually don't understand the law. I just have to be lucky to understand the law and did the research. So protection is such an important thing. Okay. Um, that's, you know, so, um, anyone that has an idea or, or, or wants to do something, you know, um, as an entrepreneur, I think they need to map it out and then find someone or either go online because, you know, um, the internet is a wonderful tool and figure out how to protect yourself before you actually start talking about it or producing it. How is the process of how you, you registered Embody International? How um, do you trademark the name? We trademarked the name. We had, first of all, we had graphic artists 
um, come behind us and actually, you know, put together. Of course, now, one thing I think everybody should know is when you're working on a product or an idea, make sure that you um, do non-disclosures with everybody you work with. Okay. Because everybody you work with, someone can easily go steal your idea if it's a great idea. Okay. So, you know, again, paper trail is so important. So I made sure everybody that worked with us had no disclosures, and we had graphic artists um, go behind me and actually put stuff together, put the concept together, and then we went online and registered, and it's very simple. Process. So then trademark your operations, get my disclosure agreement. Did you have some all of you work with? Did you have someone help you draft those non-disclosure agreements, or did you go yes. online and? Um, again, um, I've been really blessed to have um, attorneys in my life. Um, I have attorneys for clients, attorneys for friends. Okay. And um, they kind of led me the way. Okay. But, um, okay. but with everything I did, I still did the research myself. Okay. And then went behind and said, can you help me, blah, blah, blah. Right. But all these things are on the Internet. Right. All the tools you need, but you have to do your research. Right. You know. Right. Yes, because an entrepreneur has to wear many different hats. You're, you're a lawyer. You're also the, the CEO. <laughs> You're also the salesman. So, yes. And the delivery person. And the delivery person. <laughs> and FedEx. Last year, I was taking so many boxes to FedEx. I was like, how can I be the owner of the company and take all these boxes to FedEx? This is crazy. This is good that's, definitely, that's definitely what goes into entrepreneurship. Well, thank you. Do, we have, do you have anything else that you want to tell our viewers or any other advice that you'd like to give us? Well, I mean, my biggest thing is follow your dreams, and don't let anyone say you can't or cannot. Um, and if it's, if it's in your heart to do it, do it, because you never know the outcome. Right. And stand by your principles. Right. Because I get a good lawyer. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> if you don't have a good attorney, do some good research. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Olushola Nizam, for taking the time to sit out with NECA TV today and tell us basically, you know, your your wonderful story about how you took on Walmart. The man who took on Walmart is definitely what I'm going to call this story. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time out. All right. And you have a blessed day. You too. Thank you. Okay.